In starting the sketch of my base feature, looking at the drawing, I can see the L shape that shows up in the front view of this object. It has a height of 4 and a width of 5 and a material thickness of 0.75. I'll click on the sketch button on the toolbar to start a new sketch and I'm prompted to select a plane which I will select the front plane. Right click and from the pop-up menu view normal to sketch plane to turn this towards me for drawing. Choose a line command from the toolbar and I'm going to rough out this L shape using my automatic constraints that are suggested as I go along that's a horizontal and a vertical another horizontal. I will wake up this endpoint and see a projected coincident. I will click and then go to the endpoint and click again. I can see that this creates an enclosed region and escaping the line to end the line command. Next I'll use my dimension tool and clicking on this line that shows the height from the keyboard set this at 4 and this bottom edge showing the width set the value at 5. The thickness of the material that's shown on this end I'll set to 0.75 and I want this thickness to remain consistent through this L-shaped object so I'm going to apply a equal constraint so that this line is equal to this line making it a consistent thickness. So now if I were to edit the thickness here you can see that both of these will change together. My object is now constrained with dimensional constraints and if I use the show constraints I can see the icons for the geometric constraints. But the blue color of the lines tell me that there is still a degree of freedom that's left and my object is not fully defined. With no command active if I click on a line and drag you can see that the object will maintain its shape and its size but it moves freely about the sketch plane. So the last step is to make sure that my sketch is constrained to the sketch plane. And to do that, I'm going to use a coincident. And I'm going to make this corner of my sketch coincident to the origin of my sketch plane. And when I apply that coincident constraint, you'll see that all the lines turn black, indicating that my object is fully defined or fully constrained. Looking back at my reference drawings, I can see that the length along this edge is 5. So I'll end my sketch either by right-clicking the mouse and choosing Confirm Sketch from the pop-up menu, or I can use the green check mark on the sketch dialog box to end the sketch. And you can now see the sketch shows up as Sketch 1 in my feature list. I'm going to right-click the mouse and choose to change the view to isometric and choose Extrude to create the feature. You can see that in the dialog box for Extrude that I'm creating a solid part. It's going to be a new part. Uh, I need to choose the faces or regions and so we'll choose that sketch and it's going to be extruded in this direction coming forward from the sketch plane and we'll choose to accept this and I've created my base feature as a solid object. Looking again at my reference drawing I can see that there's a sloped back edge that has the same thickness of 0.75. There's a hole through the bottom that's located two inches from this outside corner and has a diameter of one inch and there is a rounded corner or a fillet applied to that outside corner with a radius of 0.5. To add the back sloping edge to my existing base feature, I'm going to start a new sketch. I'll turn my base feature so that I can use this back edge as the sketch plane. And now I'll view normal to the sketch plane and start with my line tool. And I'll snap to this upper corner. Now notice that these lines of my existing object that are on the sketch plane become usable in my new sketch. And this immediately turns black telling me that it's fully defined because these existing lines have become available to be part of my sketch. I'm going to confirm sketch 2, 
choose an isometric view, and now extrude this sketch. I want to choose, this is going to be a solid, it's not going to be new, it's going to be added to my base feature. Um, the face has already been chosen, but the direction is not right, so I'm going to choose the opposite direction. And in this case, it's the same as the other, so it's going to be 0.75. I can see the feature will be created as I want. I can right-click and say Confirm Extrude 2, or I can click the green checkbox on the dialog box to accept that, and you see that Extrude 2 has now been added to my feature list. Next, I'm going to create the hole in the bottom plate. I'm going to add this by creating a new sketch. And for my sketch plane, I'm going to use this bottom surface of my object. So when I click on that, that becomes my sketch plane. I'm going to right click, view normal. And I'll choose a center point circle, which I'm going to add here. And I know that it is one inch, so I'm going to go ahead and set the diameter right now. Diameter one inch. And for location, I'll use my dimension tool. The center of the circle to this edge is going to be two inches. And from the center of the circle to this edge is also going to be two inches. And with that, all of the lines have turned black and I know that my sketch is fully defined. With this I'm going to right click and escape my dimension tool, right click and confirm sketch 3 and choose an isometric view. To remove the material for this hole I'm going to choose my extrude feature. This time I'm going to be using the remove function. I have to choose the profile so I'll choose that circle that we just drew and for my end type, I have a drop down menu here. I'm going to say through all. So that will go through the bottom. I'll use the check mark to accept. And now I've created the hole through the bottom of the part. The last feature I'm going to add is a rounded corner on this outside edge. This will be placed with a fillet. Because this is not based on a sketch, it is considered to be a placed feature and they're usually added last in my construction process. So I want to choose the entities to be filleted. I'm going to choose this line that is on the outside corner. We'll set the radius for 0.5, and that looks right. So I'll accept this by clicking on the green box and the check mark, and now my object or my part is complete with all of the added features. Now that my part is finished, I can look over on my feature list and I can see that each of the sketches and the features are listed in the order that they were created. As I mouse over their name, I can see them light up on the model itself and that from the feature list I can go back and edit any of these sketches or features that I've created. So for example, if I go back to sketch one, right click and say edit, I now have access to this sketch and I can make changes. For example, this length was 5. If I change this to 8 and accept that, I'll see the immediate change in my model. So the power of feature-based modeling lies in this feature list that allows me to go back and edit any of the sketches or features that were created and dynamically apply these changes to my part as needed.